don't drink and drive. But it's always fun to drink while you're building your car. I need to stop buying pieces of shit. Oh, fuck. I lost my train of thought now. Even though steering wheel's fucked, the fucking badge is on crooked. It's like an end car. <laughs> now I'm just rambling and I don't know where I'm going with this. Ah! Okay. Shit. 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 <laughs> so it's taken me half a beer to get this introduction right, but this is my new car. And it arrived here on the back of a tow truck, but now it runs. It's 1989 Z32 Fairlady Z 300ZX. And it's fucked. It's got white vinyl interior, 18 inch alloys from Bob Jane T-Marts and a rattle cam black finish. Uh, we're gonna fix it up and it's gonna take quite a few of these. A, a lot of these, in fact. There's a switch in here. It doesn't do anything. Underglow neons, maybe, I don't know. Grab yourself a six pack, put your feet back, enjoy me while we're smashing gears, drinking beers on Project Fair Lady Z. The first thing we're gonna do is paint the brakes. Um, the red's gonna look a hell of a lot more sportier, um, but it'll really freshen up inside the wheel guards and. You know, once we take the wheels off, we um, see what else is in there and see what else we might have to do while the wheels are off. And it's probably about a one drink job. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do before we jack the car up is just crack the nuts. I tend to do the opposite wheel nuts. Find your jacking point underneath the car. Jack it up. With the front wheel it's easy because you can free spin it to see if it's off the ground. Once you've got your stand under, just release your jack a little bit until it lowers the car onto the stand. But leave the stand locked in place as like a double precaution. And when you've done that, you should be right to take the wheels off. As for painting the brakes, uh, if they're fairly clean, you should just, which these ones are, you should just be able to give them wiped down with some wax and grease remover to take any of the shit off the top of them. So I really just want to try and get inside of all the little fins and in between the wet lettering, just so make sure it's nice and clean so that the, the paint does stick to it. So there's a bit of a trick, um, rather than using masking paper or newspaper, what you can do is tear a little bit of a hole in a plastic bag, just a small hole, and start to thread that over the top of your brakes. And just increase the hole size as you get over the top. And like that, it fits pretty good. Use another plastic bag. These are just the plastic bags you get from the supermarket that you're gonna throw out anyway. And just like that, your whole brakes are masked up. So we're gonna use some masking tape on the top of them just to stop paint getting inside of the pads. So the first thing we're gonna do is apply the color. And when we do that, we're gonna apply it in a couple of coats. And the first coat being fairly light, we're gonna dust that on there to make sure that the paint sticks. Second coat will be heavier and then heavier again. Then after that, we'll add some clear onto it. So give the can a good shake. and then we'll dust it on there. So a couple of mouthfuls of beer and uh, five minutes later, we're probably ready to do another coat of the uh, color. So the second base, base coat's gonna be a little bit heavier. Full coverage. So you can see now, after the second coat, it's starting to look more like a red brake caliper, which is what we're after. 
So while we're at the rear wheel arches, which are, the inner arches are made of metal. So we might just give them a fresh coat of stone guard. Uh, freshen up the car, might quieten down, I doubt it. But it'll also cover up any places where there's been stone impacts in the past. So, yes, it, for the sake of $15, it's worth doing. So we're back and our brake calipers are really starting to look red. So we're really at the point now where we should be getting full coverage and just about ready for clear. So one more coat of red and we'll see how it looks. Now that we're done with the red, what we'll do is just clear the nozzle before we put it away. So the next time we go to use the red on another car perhaps, the paint is still okay. You can see that's just gone clear. It's all good. Another beer later, the red's dried, uh, it's ready for clear. And the clear is really going to make these pop inside of the uh, Bob Jane Team Art wheels that came off the car, but that's another story. So with this, you want to lay it on a little bit thicker, but not enough that it's going to drip. Give the can a good shake like any can of spray paint. and make sure you coat everything that you've painted. So I'm the type of person who's very impatient and this looks so damn good that I just don't want to wait to see how good it looks when all the uh, masking tape and plastic bags are off it. So what I'm going to do now that it's tacky and it's touch dry, though I'm not going to touch it because I don't want to leave any fingerprints in it, is that I, um, I'm going to just peel this off very carefully, peel the tape off and we'll see what it looks like so we can just prep ourselves up to uh, reinstall the wheels. It's the best thing about plastic bags. So easy to remove. And of course, the masking tape over the pads. And now it's time to put the wheels back on. But it's not the mid 2000s anymore. So we've got something better. These are Ray's Volk GTCs. The fronts are 17 by nines and the rears are 17 by tens. I bought them from a guy at a Caltech service station. So again, I'm going the opposite side of the wheel for every lug nut that I tighten up. That ensures that I keep the wheel sort of balanced, I guess, or it's tightening at an even rate. But I mean, it's just something that's always worked for me. Now that the car's on the ground, we can talk the nuts to spec. After the brake paint's dried, got the sander out and just sanded the top of the Nissan lettering. I just think it looks a heaps better than just all red and stands out a bit. Gave it a quick coat with some clear afterwards just so it doesn't rust up. But now you can tell from a distance that it's a Nissan. Gonna remove this spoiler. I like the uh, nice clean look of not having that on there and I really don't think it is all that good looking to be honest. So <clears throat> what we have to do is somehow, because uh, I'm not familiar with these cars, is remove these interior panels, uh, find the bolts for the spoiler, take that out, and then later on I'm gonna have to get the infill panel with the third brake light that goes into that. And apparently it won't stay up. So like I said earlier, I really don't know anything about the Z32. I've always had older Nissans, but I'm taking an estimate and I think this is going to be a one beer job. So I'll start up here with the obvious screws. Well, for a start, that's broken. That's obvious. See if we can pull this out maybe. Maybe a two beer job. So after uh, much careful 
deliberation, what I've decided to do is just grab it this and give it a pull. God damn. Oh, that's so gross. Oh, none of this is healthy. Oh, it's all rust. The hatch looks all right. My bee! <clears throat> I hope everyone's had a tetanus shot. Actually, the hatch is not bad. So, I've nearly got it off. It seems to be just held in by the brake light in the center here, the third brake light. If I can get that out, with a bit of magic, I should be able to get the rest of it off. Maybe two bolts inside of the hatch. Oh. So I finally removed this unwanted spoiler. Good news is, the hatch isn't that bad. Bad news for this bad boy, straight to the tip. To really see what damage has been left over from that spoiler, I'm gonna have to give this, this hatch a bit of a clean up. Um, now quite obviously there's a couple of rust spots in there and that's fine, we can get those welded up. But what hi what's hiding under this horrible matte black paint, we're not sure of. So I'll get at cleaning it and you guys stay tuned until the end and see what's happening. To clean this up, I'm just using some multi-purpose thinners. It's an acrylic thinner, um, which is what I've estimated that this uh, matte finish is painted with. And with a bit of a rub, we should really start to see what's underneath there. So after a couple of minutes of rubbing, you can really start to see that this is not quite as mad as what it used to be. Now I've got a bit of a feeling that underneath all of this is the original gl gloss color. Now as to why they've painted over the top with matte, I don't know. Maybe there's a couple of imperfections somewhere in the paint, but I tell you what, I'd rather the imperfections than this shit. So when you're doing this, when you're trying to remove uh, an acrylic paint off the top of an original surface, you have to keep changing the cloths over. If you keep using your same microfiber cloths, all the time, you're gonna end up rubbing the black back on to the black. So you kind of just, it's like washing dishes with dirty soap water. You can really see that gloss coming through there. So it's been a couple of beers because this was a hard job, but we have taken the matte black off here. We have found a couple of things. We haven't done the whole hatch, but I've done one side and I've got to have a, a bit of a rest before I continue. So we've found a couple of things that it looks like some bird, bird craps eaten through the paint here. But I tell you what, this gloss paint with that imperfection is a million times better than trying to cover it over with a cheap, matte black without any prep and it hasn't been any prep because there's no marks on the original paint. So what I'm going to do now is use my Auto Glim paint renovator which is a, a cut, not a polish, just to cut this back a bit, try to take some of the surface scratches off. I'll hit it with a super resin polish and just see how it looks. We'll worry about the rest of these imperfections later on. I just want to see how good this car really can look. 
So you're going to take some of this paint renovator. I shouldn't need too much because it's not a big area. Apply it to your microfiber. Rub it in to the paint. And now I'm going to take off that renovator and see what's underneath there. So there's some surface scratches on there, but really the paint's not that bad. I don't think that there's any excuse at all to cover the thing with matte black paint. Um, as part of the build, we've got these clear side repeaters. Um, they come with new gaskets, some wiring, which I'm not overly impressed that you've got to splice this in with these terminals actually came in here. But we'll have a look at the wiring on the thing. Maybe we can not use that or whatever. Um, easy enough to remove, I guess. Just like that. So we can just fuck that off, I guess. <clears throat> have a look at what's going on here. So these are different, so it won't fit into there. It's no good. But I'm not going to use these. I don't like that. I'd rather solder them, solder them in. Okay, so I should be able to try and get a bit more out of here, and I don't know if I can, but that should be enough. I don't want to lose it down there. So what I'll do is I'll just do one wire at a time. I'll strip that shit back. Well done for Nissan for only putting just enough wiring in the car. And someone in the comments section is going to tell me that there's heaps more wiring there if I'd pulled it out. Heat shrink. Push together. Solder together. Come on, just sweet. Always got to choose the appropriate heat shrink size. And I think I've cut this a little bit fine, but it's what I had laying around. Shrink it up with your soldering iron. Now, this is where it becomes harder because I'm running out of room. It's at this stage here where I'd usually grab myself a beverage, but I'm really trying to concentrate. Twist. Oop. Heat shrink. Never forget the heat shrink, otherwise you're going to have to wrap it with electrical tape and that just looks shit ass and it's not a, as good. Not as good. Alright, this is where we're going to have issues. Notice I've put my hand straight onto the hot solder. I don't recommend that. <laughs> it's pretty hot. Then after all that, we've got the heat shrink on there. Shrink it up, shrink it inks. Before we put it all back together, just test that it works. I'll uh, just be, uh, give this a bit of a clean up before I put it back together, I guess. Uh, plug that in. Dang it. Uh, now, which way does this go? Must go this way. And then before you walk away, upon completion, just another test. So for a five minute job, that looks heaps better. Ah, why is this one so much longer? But they've put it all onto this side rather than the other side. Yeah, well. That is it on episode one of Intake Project Z. Not N, Z or Z for my American brethren. Mailman's come, delivered all this shit. That's all going to go on next episode. Stay tuned for that. The hatch is off getting repaired. Goodbye spoiler. And um, until then, smash some more beers, grind some gears. That's ours. Our, like slogan motto on intake smashing gears grinding beers project Z not in <laughs>